Welcome to the Sleuth Report. Today's report on Intersleuths, we are going to be testing the functionality of smuggling in the Crusader Mercury Star Runner on patch 3.19. By applying our rating system, we will find out just how well it's functioning in this patch. Our rating system consists of three different categories. These include the feature as a concept, as well as how well that concept is executed in game, and finally, how balanced the feature is difficulty wise. Scores from each of these categories will then be added up to give a total overall score at the end of the report. Before we get started, I want to let everyone know that we are doing a giveaway for the month of June. We are giving away a C8X Pisces Invictus Starter Pack. This starter package comes with access to the game, as well as 120 month insurance, 1000 Alpha UEC starting credits, and Invictus Blue and Gold Paint for the C8X. If you are a new player thinking about getting into Star Citizen, be sure to use my referral code while creating your account and get yourself an additional 5000 Alpha UEC starting credits in-game. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is be subscribed to the channel, leave a comment on any video during the month of June, and if you don't mind, help spread the word on the Sleuth Reports by leaving a like on the video and sharing it with your friends. Now let's mobilize as we sleuth deeper. For Category 1, we are going to be going over the concept of how smuggling is supposed to work in-game as it currently stands, as well as the future of smuggling. While smuggling does not currently have the most depth out of all the professions you have to choose from, it still has a great opportunity to bring fun gameplay to the table. If you do find yourself smuggling anything in the persistent universe, chances are it will be drugs in this current patch. While we do fully expect a vast array of choices on what to smuggle in the future, as it stands right now, your options will be somewhat limited. The illegal drugs that are currently in-game consist of the following, Slam, Widow, Neon, maze, and ETAM. While we won't be going in-depth on what these illegal drugs are specifically, we will be touching on some of the places that they can come from, as well as where they can be sold and for how much. The concept of smuggling can be a very appealing one. The thought of hauling all kinds of less-than-legal cargo while keeping away from prying eyes is enough to get the adrenaline pumping. Even though some cargo might be prohibited in some areas of UEE space, you might find that it is perfectly acceptable in another. As a concept, the idea of a system with a large range of depth such as this makes this profession extremely appealing. The risk versus reward this offers could be a very profitable opportunity. On one hand, you stand to make a great return on investment, but on the other hand, there is the inherent risk of getting caught, which might get you stuck in some sticky situations. It also might not even be the authorities that catch wind of you. Smuggling also has the potential to draw in other criminal elements who might want to take your piece of the pie, so to speak. Flying under the radar is essential for anyone looking to make it out alive and with their precious cargo intact. This is where shielded cargo bays come into play. Shielded cargo is very rare as it is right now in game. I would love to see some sort of player made makeshift shielded cargo in the future, allowing players to use different ships and still have some of the security that comes along with shielded cargo bays. Another interesting idea would be to have shielded compartments and even shielded cargo containers themselves. Maybe you take an SCU box that is meant for something such as RMC, you then empty it out and fill it with contraband, allowing you to have a little more protection from scans while moving the cargo to its final destination. On the topic of scans, this is currently the main way of finding illegal cargo in-game. Having more cargo in your regular cargo bay should make scanning deeper into your shielded cargo bay all the more difficult but nothing is perfect, and that goes for shielding as well. Once more star systems come online, we will be able to smuggle from Pyro back to Stanton and vice versa. I would love to see a system where authorities are even trying to prevent certain supplies from leaving Stanton en route to Pyro in an attempt to help curb the criminal elements operating in that system. Another element of contraband is anything that is marked as stolen. Things can be marked as stolen for a wide variety of reasons. Once the crime and punishment system gets more depth added to it, I'm sure it will have direct implications on smuggling as a whole. Maybe you stumbled upon a ship in deep space, but there is still a communications link to the authorities nearby, allowing them to report crimes against them. If you were to scan them and find they were hauling something that is completely legal, but also very valuable, who is to say you won't try to take it for yourself? If the goods just happen to find themselves in your cargo bay after a long negotiation with the captain of the other ship, those goods might end up reported stolen. Once they're marked as stolen, this once perfectly legal cargo is now contraband. 
Smuggling can even overlap with some in-game events as well. The Jump Town event has players go to a drug manufacturing facility to either dispose of the drugs in the authorized fashion, or on the other hand, the player might also choose to smuggle them for their own profit. There is no telling how deep this might go in the future as they expand upon the in-game event systems. The same principle can then be applied for data running as well. While we won't be going in-depth on data running in this report, we will touch on it where it overlaps with smuggling. Data can be illegal just like normal cargo. Just because it is not on the cargo grid in the back of your ship does not mean it is safe from scans either. I fully expect there to be some form of scanning for data on your ship's computer systems. We already know there will be an element of hacking with the Anvil Legionnaire. This same element might make its way into the data aspect of the game as well. If cargo can be illegal, data can be illegal. Information is power after all, and we can't have information in the wrong hands. While we don't know to what extent data running will overlap with smuggling, it is an interesting concept to think about. Maybe you scan some form of UEE security outpost or satellite and steal precious information that might be useful to someone else. That will surely need to be hidden from the authorities to prevent you gaining a crime stat. I would love to see some form of player data running as well. Once data is physicalized in-game, stealing data from players might also become a reportable offense. Maybe there is a player out there at their homestead who has some secure data they need transferred to a UEE database that is located at a security outpost. They could then pay you and provide you the proper credentials to get on base and transfer the data to the secure database. What if you then take that data and try to copy it, or even steal it altogether? You can see how smuggling of data could be a dangerous thing. When NPCs become more of a viable asset in-game, we might even see the smuggling of slaves or even other criminals who need to get somewhere without being found. This is where the overlap between smuggling and passenger missions comes into play. It would be interesting to see passenger missions offered by criminals who need to leave the Stanton system to get to Pyro undetected, or maybe even a high-class citizen who needs to disappear for whatever reason. There are all sorts of gameplay interactions and overlaps with the concept of smuggling in Star Citizen. While we can't touch on all of them in just one video, I think this gives a good idea of what is in-game right now as well as what could become part of this profession in the future. It is for all these considerations that we are giving smuggling in the Crusader Mercury Star Runner as a concept a solid 9 out of 10. Smuggling as a profession should prove to be very rewarding and fun, but not without its risks. The fact that smuggling touches on just about every other aspect of the game makes this profession have a wide array of gameplay opportunities, making sure that it always stays fresh. That then brings us to our second category, Execution. Execution can sometimes be a tricky thing in Star Citizen, as it is known for having its fair share of bugs during this alpha stage we are currently in. I expect a lot of different reports that we put out to suffer in this category because of these bugs. It is, however, important to know that while we are judging based on this current patch, things do often get fixed quickly in-game. If there are any huge issues, I would keep up to date on any fixes put out by CIG. The functionality of smuggling as it currently stands in 3.19 is very shallow. The lack of depth to this profession is going to hold it back quite a bit. If you are just looking to make a quick buck, it might prove profitable, but there are some things to consider before making any large upfront purchases to smuggle. Lack of any solid 30k protection still proves to be a huge issue in this Star Citizen patch. Buying out a warehouse of all the narcotics they have available to then turn around and have the server 30k on you definitely does not feel good. In fact, this is one of the fastest ways to lose a boatload of credits all at once because the product is not cheap to buy in the first place. It is because of this issue that we highly recommend taking advantage of some of the in-game events that frequently take place to acquire your narcotics. While we won't be going in depth on Jump Town, we did want to mention it so players can keep an eye out for when this event is running. If you are taking part in the lawful side of Jump Town, you must have a crime stat of zero. While as if you are trying to take part in the unlawful side of the event, you must have a crime stat of at least one. It should also be noted that this event is a PvP event, and much like with everything in Star Citizen, there is always a chance of other players stepping in. This is where some of the excitement of smuggling comes into play, however. It may not be the most exciting thing at the current moment to be a smuggler because of the lack of depth. You might find that you just feel like a regular old cargo hauler most of the time, but there can be an extra layer of excitement when doing your best to avoid scans and running from the law. If you do choose to take part in smuggling in 3.19, here is how much profit you can expect to make. Depending on the ship you're using and the amount of product you're able to procure, your outcome will vary. 
All besides Mays are purchasable at different in-game locations. Profits for successfully selling these narcotics range from 2,000 Alpha UEC all the way up to 6,000 Alpha UEC per SCU. While special products such as Mays sell for much more, but are only acquirable from certain situations such as Jumptown. It is for all these considerations we are giving the execution of smuggling in the Crusader Mercury Star Runner a 3 out of 10. There will need to be a lot of crossplay added for this profession after more parts of its gameplay come online, but considering its current lack of meaningful depth, that is why its score in this category is suffering. Now on to our third and final category, Balance. While we won't be spending too much time on balance in our reports, we do however want to let you know how balanced it currently is so you can determine if it is worth your time in-game. Balance is an ever-changing thing in Star Citizen during this alpha stage. This is because constant tweaks and additions can throw off how rewarding something is in-game at any time. While some other professions in-game have alternative methods to acquiring credits, smuggling unfortunately is very limited in this regard. If you can get your hands on some product using alternative methods, maybe such as piracy or from an in-game event such as Jumptown, then you would not have to worry about any upfront cost being at risk from a 30k. Another consideration that must be looked at is the large upfront cost to even begin smuggling in the first place. While other professions such as salvaging, you can stumble on wrecks to salvage. While this might be possible with smuggling contraband, it is extremely unlikely. It is for all these considerations that we are giving the balance of smuggling in the Crusader Mercury Star Runner a 3 out of 10. With its large upfront cost and all the risks involved, in our eyes smuggling is only for the rich or anyone who is willing to take extreme risks. This brings the overall score for smuggling in the Crusader Mercury Star Runner to a total of 15 out of 30. The main things holding back smuggling in the Crusader Mercury Star Runner are the lack of 30k protection to prevent losing your cargo in case of a server crash, as well as a somewhat shallow gameplay loop as it currently stands in this patch. After we see more variety of the content you can smuggle, I would expect the score to go up significantly. Outside of the issues we have outlined, smuggling can be a very good profession that can require very little in the way of FPS combat and any other form of gameplay other than flying your ship from point A to point B. This lends itself to being somewhat relaxing and less hectic at the moment, other than the occasional run-in with the law or pirates. And that brings us to the end of this sleuth report for smuggling in the Crusader Mercury Star Runner. Let us know in the comments what features you would like to see reports for in the future. Be sure to join our organization on Star Citizen. A link will be in the description to join the Intersleuths. Thanks for watching to the end. I've been your host Voidlock. I hope you enjoyed our breakdown as we look forward to sleuthing with you in the future.